Hey, Andrew, welcome to The Market is Open. Hey, Josh, how's it going? Uh, not bad. So today you wanted to talk about Disney. Yeah, let's go over Disney. Uh, we'll talk about their balance sheet because now part of their business is shut down. So let's see uh, what's left up and running and some of the steps that they're taking uh, to mitigate uh, some of the issues that we're seeing. Uh, yeah, so first we made a video on our channel, The Market is Open. That's our main channel. Uh, we can put a link in the description where we talked about Disney and uh, Bob Iger's reign at the company and how he's managed to uh, organize the company with his acquisitions and, and create these small powerhouses within the company. And now Bob Iger has left and Bob Chapek is the CEO. But Disney has four major components to their business. So we'll go over those because it's quite diversified in the media network, in, in the media space. And uh, so let's see what they have. So they have uh, media networks is their, I guess, uh, second largest revenue division, uh, which includes things like ESPN and and parks and experiences is their parks, which are all shut down right now. Isn't that so amazing? Getting, it's the biggest por portion of their revenue. Yeah, it's a huge portion of the revenue. Uh, however, it's also, I don't know if we see it here, but it's also a huge portion of their expenses. Mm -hmm. But it says and, their operating income, so it's not their largest segment by operating income, but it's their second largest. Yes. And then, well, Studio Entertainment is also going to get hurt because no one's going to the movie theater to watch a movie. Mm -hmm. And then we have Direct to Consumer, which would include things like Disney Plus, which they're going to be pushing really hard. So, oh, um, there, is Direct to Consumer that's all Disney Plus? Well, there's also Hulu and ESPN Plus. Okay. So this is all their sort of online streaming channels. Direct to consumer doesn't mean sort of like action figures and stuff. Well, they okay, yeah. So I think it looks like they put action figures. They rearranged their things in the la this year. They put action figures, I believe, under parks. So it says parks, experiences, and products, and I believe they they moved it over there. Okay. So yeah, things like action figures, and I guess they have a lot of licensing agreements as well with um, what's it called. Uh, Hasbro. Hasbro. Ah, okay. So yeah, with Hasbro and Mattel, they have a lot of uh, licensing deals, you know, with uh, action figures and whatnot. So Disney still makes a lot of money off of that, but I'm not sure how well that segment is going to be doing uh, now that people aren't going to be going to stores as much at the moment. Their products now is going to be lumped in with parks, and because they're, you know, the stores are shut down, whatever, who, how many people are going to be going uh, to, uh, you know, Toys R Us or whatever, <laughs> or it's probably not even open, but to the Disney store to purchase uh, items like that. So that uh, that division isn't going to be doing too well, especially because a lot of products and stuff are probably sold at the parks themselves. Right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of shops, shops and things. So that division is not going to be doing well. It's probably going to go to zero or pretty close to that. But but, uh, but yeah, so studio entertainment, I think some of the money might, be come, back, might come back because people are going to be renting a lot more videos. <clears throat> okay, so what they're doing is they're taking their studio entertainment kind of business and they're going to be putting it into direct to consumer so let's switch to that article that we had open so this movie here onward is i guess like a disney uh type movie disney pixar movie which they normally would put into theaters but now they're putting it direct to streaming so it's going to go right to streaming people can watch it from home and i guess a lot of they're saying that a lot of parents are going to be happy because of that because they don't need to go to the theater they can just watch it on their televisions at home so i think that's one of the steps disney's taking in the meantime in order to mitigate you know the billions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars they put into this movie which they don't want it to go to waste you're not going to put it into theaters for for nothing so you know they need money to sustain their business and maybe it'll get more people onto their streaming platform mm -hmm. the price i remember hearing this yesterday the price seems a little high doesn't it like for 1999 um it's like that because it's on like third party services like you know on youtube you can rent movies and stuff but it's like four dollars a movie or five bucks whatever the price is mm -hmm. for a movie whereas you can just buy disney plus all of it and get everything for five bucks a month so i think they probably release it uh first on those other platforms you know to try to get the early adopters to pay more money and then they'll put it on disney plus very quickly in order to you know uh everybody can have it and and they also want more people to uh, get Disney Plus, which is very profitable, but there's so few users using it, or, you know, there's like 20 million people using it, uh, but it's small for Disney because it's not bringing in uh, enough money yet. They need to scale that up dramatically in order to make it more pronounced for their business. 
Okay, so Disney Plus is out right now, but they still want to put it on these third-party platforms until Disney Plus gets bigger. Yeah, and I think Disney Plus also needs to roll out in a whole bunch of other countries where uh, I guess it doesn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Netflix has been building out internationally for a long time. Yeah, Disney needs to catch up on their their scale, their international rollout, but obviously they do have the scale to do that over time. But I think that's the focus now while the, the parks and the, uh, you know, movie theaters side of the business isn't going to be doing too well. Yeah. So their one business before we go to their balance sheet, media networks should be doing okay. I would think for a bit, we know. Yeah. Media networks you would think would do very well. I think they are. I'm sure people pay a monthly fee for that. And it has been going down over, over time as we know but it's still very profitable for them. However, if part of it is ESPN, which is sports, and if nobody's playing sports or very few people are, then uh, not many people are going to be watching. And, you know, they might have some advertising contracts or or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you can't display that many ads, if nobody's watching, then they're not going to make as much money off that. For sure. And I would expect that money to go down, but you have to consider this. So let's say, Mm -hmm. like, uh, I'll just add one thing so more people are going to be watching i think their viewership will go up by 110 times let's say that normally 3 million people would watch now everyone's watching because everyone's at home doing nothing but then at the same time advertisers will get a lower rate so it's possible that they make around the same amount of money in media networks when it's all said and done yeah that's definitely one of the divisions that i think will do well so so that's good yeah So so that probably will keep its you know six billion Six billion of profit, maybe over the year. It just at, just estimating off the top of my head that if they made seven point five billion in a normal scenario, then maybe they can make six billion in a depressed scenario. Yeah, and you would expect parks. I guess let's pretend that goes to zero if all the parks are closed. Sure. And for now, let's just say that earns zero. But we'll do a bit more of a deep dive for now. But we'll just knock that down to zero for now. Yeah, and then studio entertainment. Uh... Very, all, almost zero. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. If, maybe I unless would... they count those. Unless they count those, like the nineteen ninety nine stuff that you were looking in that. But it, I'm assuming it would be that's more of a direct to consumer channel. I see what you're saying. Depends how they count it, but either way, you'll see CEO Entertainment go to zero and direct to consumer go up, like slightly less of a loss because they're gonna more people are gonna be watching and subscribing to their services and they're going to move the studio entertainment stuff into that section basically okay so that's my thing that's my thinking around it okay but at least in studio entertainment hmm it's hard to know if they could cut all the shows that they're developing it sounds like they'll probably eat those costs too they're not just going to stop all development right now yeah it seems like that part of the division can all, everybody can work from home mostly, you know, it's mainly computer, computer stuff, unless they're filming like a, like some sort of a movie where you need actors and stuff. And, and it's hard, you know, if you need a lot of people to get together in the same area, they won't be able to really do that. Mm-hmm. And also a lot of the expenses are marketing, which they can all delay for when they're going to release those movies. Yeah. Uh, While well, they're pushing a lot of marketing, I'm seeing a lot of, well, from what I'm seeing, uh, I see them pushing Disney Plus constantly, and it doesn't look like they've slowed that down. But I think that that's where they should be pushing now, because while everybody's at home on the internet, they want to see Disney Plus ads to, to try to subscribe. Okay, so you wanted to look at Disney's balance sheet? Uh, you know, let's see if they can sustain their business. But I think, like, I don't think it matters too much because if their income statement doesn't dip too much below zero, or you know, it stays above zero even, because part of their business will still be profitable then they can sort of continue uh, indefinitely until, you know, their stuff starts coming back online. Let's see their current liabilities. So Disney has more current liabilities than current assets right now. And some of it is borrowing. So Disney's probably able to, you know, uh, re-jigger those borrowings. So that should be fine. Like not pay them right now until they get some of their receivables and stuff. Yes, or they could just ask the banks to, because this is a current portion of their borrowing, so they could reamend it to get more borrowings or pay it back at a later date. I'm sure the mm-hmm. banks would be fine with a company like of Disney's calendar caliber. So when we see their current assets, they're in a pretty good shape if we 
Because usually when you look at working capital, you don't really talk about borrowings because the way working capital set up, you're sort of looking at what are the, what is the operating side of the business and what is the financial side. And the financial side is sort of equity and debt. So current portion of borrowings is more on the financial side, how you fund your operations, not really what you how you work in your operations. So when you the way you work your operations, you have, you know, your account receivable, you have your accounts payable, which is your employees that you need to pay. But when we talk about the current portion of borrowings, that's more how you finance your business. It's not really how you run your day to day operations. Yeah. Cool. So that means Disney is looking pretty good overall. And you want to look at the uh, the stock price and see how much the stock is down so far? Mm-hmm. But I just wanted to go through the income statement just quickly first, because yeah. we see their cost of services, $36 billion, cost of products, $5.5 billion, SG&A, $11, $11 billion, depreciation and amortization, uh, $4 four billion i think disney will if this hopefully this doesn't go on too long but there's disney will definitely be losing some amount of money but probably not enough to really think it's financially harmed sort of thing yeah like you would think especially for their movie business that they they have a roadmap for their big movies and if there's ever a problem they can it shouldn't be too difficult to delay their movies because they're created you know two years in advance so they're constantly paying people and, and paying for equipment or whatever to create mm-hmm. the movie, but the movie only happens at a certain time in the future. So if that changes by a couple of months or even a year, like it could be bad, but it can be it won't be terrible. Yeah. So I get I guess what I see is media network stays around seven billion. Parks and experience might even go to a big loss such as five billion. Because yeah. I think Disney's saying they're still play, paying their employees. Oh so yeah, yeah. Studio entertainment. This could probably dropped to zero and this goes to zero so it sounds like it looks like just quick not even a back of the envelope uh sort of top of the mind valuation it looks like disney can lose a few billion this year if this were to go on for a full year this is just extrapolating you know this month so if this were to go on for a full year disney would probably only lose a few billion dollars yeah and they have enough cash in the bank to sustain that i'm sure they can have but some but a, a better question as we go to the stock, and we'll talk about it as we look at the stock. So the stock is down from a high from 146. And you looked at it in your video. Was a lot of the jump up in their price having to do with people being excited of Disney Plus? Or Yeah. What? Okay. Well, the business is like they're trying to slow down the rate at which they're losing customers for their main cable type business. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, yeah, they're adding... They had uh, 10 million customers for Disney Plus in the first day, and I think they were at over 20 million. So, yeah, Disney Plus is pretty exciting for people. Yeah. So, no, that is pretty exciting. So, I wonder what valuation people attach to the Disney Plus business. So, if we were thinking with the introduction of Disney Plus, the stock is up, you know, 20 or $30. And And then it's only worth uh, $85 now. Yeah. So, that's. So now basically, and that value, I mean, Netflix hasn't changed much. So you're basically getting, you know, a top quality streaming business now for uh, $30 and you get the rest of the business for free. But that's kind of wanted, what I wanted to talk about. So I, how assured are we that parks, experiences, and products will come back? And when will that come back? Yeah, that, yeah that's unknown. Uh, you would think that that's probably one of the most... Um you know, places that are affected the most by this, uh, this thing that's going around. So like, that's where a lot of people gather and get together from all around the world. So not many people want to travel. So you would need, you know, airlines to come back first and, and things like that, uh, worldwide travel to come back a little bit more to get more people going. You can open it up and have a few people going there, but that might take more time than people think. Exactly. So that could take almost a couple of years for that to go back into full steam but i think uh, yeah like maybe a when year. I, but when i say full steam i mean getting back to the 6.7 billion of profit they made this year I, i'm not saying that they can't okay. get, yeah. i'm not saying they can't get back to 2 billion of profit or 3 billion of profit but what i'm saying is i wouldn't think they would get back to their 6.7 billion in 6 months from so sort of that 6.7 billion run rate or at in 6 months from now i would say it would probably take a couple of years uh, yeah, that's fair. But I think it'll open yeah, much before that. And then you'll have to get people to sort of forget what we were just in to come back. 
Mm -hmm. And I think they would be careful. Maybe they'll do COVID tests outside the park, something like that. I could see a lot of airlines doing that to ensure safety that, hey, you have to come for your flight 45 minutes, an extra 45 minutes early to do a test before you get on. So that way we can <laughs> test you. Well, I mean, the, we're in a different world right now. There's, it sounds funny, uh, yeah. but it sounds funny. But at the same time, what are you going to do when you have these places? Well, if it takes a year, maybe they'll give people vaccines right before. <laughs> Yes. So if we do get the vaccine, then it will be good. But I was also wondering this before we go. So let's say once 30% of the population has this COVID and they're cured from it, right? Yeah. Wait, is this separate? You want to stop the video? Okay. Should we end the video first? Okay, sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, Just... All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe to this channel and hit the thumbs up button. Thanks very much.